Hi there, Steve Sierski for the Language Vlog, and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about getting started writing uh, in Chinese characters. Uh, it's a language that I've been studying for quite some time, uh, and it didn't start out with me really wanting to uh, learn how to write Chinese, but uh, as my studies progressed in the language, I found that it actually helped quite a bit to actually spend some time writing out the characters themselves, uh, not necessarily to attain full proficiency or full fluency, but also because it helped me just to learn and develop my own uh, vocabulary in the language. Um, there are a few books I'll recommend, or I'll, actually I'll, I'll, I'll go through the books that I've used over my study periods, but uh, there are many other uh, sources out there uh, that you can certainly check out, and uh, if something suits you a little bit better, might be a better idea to go through those. Uh, and more importantly, there are a lot of apps or programs that you can use on cell phones and computers. Uh, that means that you don't even have to go out and buy a book if you uh, don't want to. One of the first books I would recommend, if you're actually not even wanting to get into writing characters just yet, but you want to dip your toes in to get a bit of the uh, bit of a feel for the language, it's actually something like this, which is a uh, book that deals with the explanation behind the characters uh, in the Chinese language. Um, and so what this book does is that it gives you uh, a lot of stories, a lot of background information about uh, the development of the characters how some of them sort of can explain themselves and some of them how they've developed over time. Uh, it's this book in particular published by uh, Beijing Language uh, University Press uh, is actually in both languages. So it's in Mandarin Chinese uh, on one page and then English on the other side. And as the book progresses, you'll see that it offers uh, a look at how a lot of these characters develop from the Oracle Bone script went through the Bronze Age script, small uh, seal, clerical, and then now to the regular. Uh, I don't know if it, uh, yeah, I guess it, it does sort of differentiate clerical script and then regular script. Clerical, clerical script might be a little bit more along the lines of traditional uh, Chinese characters, uh, but it, it gives you this sort of whole idea of how the characters have progressed and how they changed over time. This won't necessarily teach you the characters themselves, but it'll help you develop an idea and an understanding and an awareness of the language as you go forward and as you encounter a lot of these characters or parts of these characters as radicals. So whether they're on the left side or up, uh, on the top of a character, uh, these will help quite a bit in learning and remembering the vocab, remembering the characters that you are looking at, uh, remembering the vocabulary, Later on, they could also help with pronunciation, uh, but then also, uh, for sure, help you with your understanding of um, uh, the characters uh, and the text that you're reading as well. Now, again, I got this one here in Beijing. So I got this at uh, BLCU Press, which is on the, the uh, Beijing uh, Language and Culture University campus. Uh, and uh, this one cost me, what, 69 kwai, 70 kwai. So current price, maybe $10, $15. Uh, so this is one method that you could use uh, to uh, start researching or start looking into uh, some of the history behind the Chinese characters if you don't want to start writing them out just yet. But this is a good uh, starting point uh, for those who are maybe even just starting out learning uh, Chinese, uh, their Chinese adventure uh, anyway. Next, if you want to step it up a little bit more and actually get involved with writing the characters, I suggest that you get a, a simple book. Uh, that is meant for foreigners or for me meant for non-Chinese uh, speaking individuals uh, and uh, invest in one of those books. Again, it doesn't have to be very expensive. Um, it doesn't have to be a kid's book necessarily, but it does have to be simple enough that it explains some of the uh, the background of the, uh, the stroke order and how characters are actually composed. The one I used was this one, uh, Writing Chinese Characters from the Practice Makes Perfect series. Um, this one very thin and only cost me, oh, it says $16 US, but I'm not sure if I got that on discount through uh, Taobao or Jing, uh, Jingdong. Uh, it is the authentic book as well, it's not a photocopy. Um, and so this one is a little bit different, a little bit more involved in the sense that this one will teach you a lot about the different stroke names. So that might surprise you. So as English has sort of uh, an alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, Chinese has a vocabulary of strokes, and it gives you a whole index to look at, uh, to uh, know and study on your own. 
Now, whether or not you need, as a beginner, need to know this, Chinese kids learn this uh, very early on, but they learn it over time um, and often from their parents as well. So if you don't have that same exposure, it might be difficult to develop the familiarity with the components of the characters. So all that being said, each chapter is broken down with a certain uh, stroke. So there's hung, uh, there is another one, pie as well, downward, downward swoop, <laughs> uh, and so on. And it goes on throughout uh, how to write up, uh, upright ticks. So T, so it goes up like that. So again, this one uh, is very good, very simple uh, to look at, and it also gives you, of course, the, uh, the, the grid, the, the, the quadrant to write within, and shows you how to actually uh, write a character from the top left over to the right, down, and then back to the left again. Very good book. Again, uh, writing Chinese characters. You might wonder, uh, might be wondering, Steve, it's a, if it's such a good book, why does it look so new? Very good question. One of the reasons I didn't use this book all the time is because I actually practiced in a separate notebook, so I would keep this one uh, for later on as well. So I want to, it's a bit of a preservation, but you don't have to do it that way. You can write in the book. It's meant for that, and, and actually I encourage you to get a book like that so you actually have a written record of the development of your uh, Chinese characters. The next sort of step up from writing uh, writing Chinese characters, a, a, simple, a simple book like that, uh, is once you have an idea of how uh, characters are written, you can actually uh, find a sort of a more of an encyclopedic book if you want, such, uh, such as this one, Reading and Writing Chinese by uh, William McNaughton, revised by uh, Jia Gun Fan. And this book is quite thick, kind of heavy, and extensive. I mean, it is, uh, what, 300 pages of uh, characters. This one, like the other simplified book, shows you the stroke orders that are involved. So here for uh, uh, Shu book, how it starts like this, and then how it builds over time as well. It gives you a very, it doesn't give you uh, a description of what uh, the character's history is, but it does give you a description of how the character is used and some of the uh, other words that you can develop from it. So it's almost like a root word and then it gives you some words that are based on that root word. This book is a little bit more advanced and the reason why is because it has, since it has so many characters, they actually tell you there are three different lists in this book, A, B, and C. The first time you go through this book, you go through uh, list A. Then you go through a book again, the book again and you pick out all the uh, characters from list B. So you'll see there's a B there. And then finally you go through the characters again one more time, and if I can find a character with a C in it, um, or that is part of the list C, it usually goes towards the end. So list A, B, and C, and then they have the remaining characters, which is quite a few as well. Um, so there, there are quite a few characters to look at, but this book is extensive, uh, and not only will you learn how the characters are written, but it'll vastly increase your vocabulary. Now, if you don't want to carry that book around with you, what I suggest you do is actually do, uh, write out a few of the characters uh, on a piece of paper and take them with you. So this is what I used to do, is like this. So I would uh, choose a few characters, I'd basically go through the, the book in order, and I'd write them down. Here I have the character, I have the pinion, and I have the uh, the definition. One thing I should have actually added to this list, although uh, there was a reason why I didn't, is whether or not it's a noun, ver verb, uh, adjective, etc. Why didn't I write that down? The reason uh, that I left out the grammatical functions of each of the characters is because I want to focus only on writing the characters, on character development, uh, a bit of vocabulary development, that was it. I was not concerned about grammar at that point. So that's something that you can do with this book, again, with this very extensive book, Reading and Writing Chinese Characters. Write out some on note, uh, uh, notepads or whatever and uh, take them with you. And that way, whenever you have a chance, you can write them out. Now you might actually ask one question, a follow-up to that is like, well, wait a minute, that piece of paper is rather small. Where did you actually keep track of all of your characters? And for that, 
I actually had a separate notebook. Now it's not this notebook because this is my notebook from many, the, but my more recent notebook that I've been using. But I had another book like this where I would be using the, these characters as a basis and I would write them out 25 times each in a uh, notebook such as this. This one is from Tianjin Foreign Studies University. <laughs> there we go. Collect them all from around the entire country. Uh, and so in a notebook, my notebook like this, I would write out each character 25 times. I would put the uh, uh, character, the initial character, the definition, and the, and the pinyin, of course. And then I'd write out each character 25 times. As I progressed, I stopped writing out individual characters and started writing out, copying out sentences instead, writing out the textbook. And again, not worrying about definitions, not worrying about grammatical functions, just worrying about developing the ability to actually write uh, the Chinese characters uh, themselves. If you want to step it up even more after you've dealt uh, with some of the uh, more foreign centric or non-native uh, Chinese sources, you can then look into something that what uh, middle school students would uh, use here in China. Now this is a uh, book that would be given to students to practice their own writing uh, when they are developing their own character uh, abilities to developing their own uh, character writing uh, skills. And so this one, the big difference is that first of all, it is all in Chinese. So that's the, the major sort of um, one, one part of this book that uh, maybe if you're just beginning your Chinese studies, you might not want to look into. Uh, but this one has, this one's meant to be written with a special Chinese pen. And that's why it has tissue paper in between. So it, uh, it can absorb some of the uh, ink in between pages so you don't get them all smudged and everything. Uh, but this one would require you to have a special pen, uh, not this one, but it, it would look something like this and it'd be, usually it's the calligraphy pen that they would be using or a brush they might be using as well. And they would again, trace out the radicals. They would trace out some of the characters. They would also have a separate book, separate notebook that has the quadrants in them. And they would copy out each character a bunch of times, 25, 50, hundred times. Uh, and that's one of the books that they would be using from. So they wouldn't, Although they would start writing in this book to learn, to, to begin the process, they would then use a separate notebook that has the characters pre-made, or sorry, has the uh, quadrants, uh, the four component boxes pre-made, and they would copy out each character a bunch of times into their, uh, their notebook. But again, this one is meant for uh, actual uh, high school, middle school, uh, elementary school students here in China, uh, and it's not geared towards uh, anybody like the, the foreign audience. So this is, a, I guess, a professional student's notebook on how to write Chinese characters, I guess, if uh, you want to classify it as that. And there's one other way that uh, uh, another so-called professional book that you could use as well, uh, and it would be something along this, where you can, these books are very cheap. I think uh, these are actually meant for kids, probably middle school as well. Uh, but these books are interesting because they are more based on stories. They give you uh, the explanation and how the characters are written, but the and the characters are pre-written, if you can see that. So they're very lightly pre-written. They're actually punched into the paper. Why are they like that? They give you a pen like this that has disappearing ink. So you trace it and you'll uh, you'll be able to go through the whole page, and by the time you're finished that last character on the page, this character will be uh, blank again. The ink will have disappeared. So it's kind of neat. It's meant to um, uh, give you that practice of being able to trace more complex characters than you would find in the other books. Uh, so the other books are a bit more basic. Uh, they would help you develop a little bit more of a vocabulary. This one is meant for the higher level uh, characters. This isn't necessarily HSK, if that's what you're studying for. Uh, these are derived from stories, uh, traditional stories uh, in Chinese literature. And so that's why they're focusing more. They're not focusing so much on vocabulary development. They're focusing on developing the ability to write these characters according to the radical or the main component that appears uh, in a lot of these characters. So, but again, this is uh, something you might not want to start out with this book, but certainly you'd aim to progress towards something like this because uh, not only is it, you know, you can, the, the ink disappears, but also uh, it will help you get it. If you're actually interested in Chinese culture, it is a, one of these ways that you can read 
uh, some books, read something about the literature as well as you go along, as you learn about the uh, Chinese characters uh, themselves. And finally, the last way that you can get started writing, uh, even if you uh, if you have a textbook already, great, uh, that's one source. If you don't have a textbook, you can always find the stuff online or even in a newspaper. Uh, is to simply, so the, the simplest idea I have for you is get a pen and a notebook and just start writing. Copying out what you see, do your best, look at a character, try to draw out a character. Now, this won't be the professional method. This won't be uh, the method. And certainly, if people see you writing like this, they'll They'll wonder, first of all, why you're writing in Chinese characters, but number two, they will often point out the mistakes that you're doing in uh, developing the character, because there is a certain stroke order to how characters, uh, Chinese characters are written. Uh, but, uh, I mean, if you can read it, if they can read it, and your electronic dictionary can read it, what's the problem? The idea behind uh, simply just copying out uh, a book or your textbook or anything is uh, it's first of all it's simple and you don't have to worry too much about understanding everything and translating everything uh, but like when I started my HSK 5 studies a couple of years ago um, I just focused on writing out the characters or the texts from the textbook so I just copied exactly what was in the uh, the book not worrying so much about vocabulary development at that time not worrying about grammar or even translating everything I instead wanted to develop the process the mechanical ability of being able to write Chinese characters. That was it. So it was just copying down uh, my uh, my textbook from the textbook into my notebook. Later on, as I took classes with a, a teacher online through WeChat, uh, I started writing out class notes. Uh, so you see this May 17th, 2021. Uh, I would get these uh, new words, so new vocabulary, new vocabulary from my teacher. I'd write down the pinyin, I'd write down the characters, and I would write down the uh, definition as well. Uh, and I would do that for the vast majority of my classes. And my classes were about an hour, um, although sometimes they would be drilling grammar points or vocabulary. Uh, so it does seem like a lot of work, and it was, but I also found that it helped me to review class notes uh, as well, instead of just going, mm-hmm, yeah, got it, and then moving on and not thinking about it again. Uh, it also helped take away from uh, the digital aspect. So if it was in my cell phone, it had a chance to get lost. But here, if I copy the notes into my notebook, then I knew I always had one place offline, regardless of electricity or distractions on my cell phone, that I could go consult just about any time I wanted to. And as things progressed, or thing, as things have progressed, uh, now getting into writing journals on my own, wherein I am practicing, uh, again, not so much, um, well, now I'm more focusing on remembering what the characters are, being able to write them without looking them up in a dictionary, but also looking at how more of a grammatical uh, aspect, more of vocab, uh, vocabulary as well. So expanding my vocabulary, because often with Chinese, you'll be able to say a word, uh, you'll have to think of the word, you'll be able to read the word, but can you write that word? So that's the point that I'm at right now in my own studies, is being able to think, uh, say, and then also write down uh, the Chinese character in a way that can be recognized by other, other people. So um, again, I, I would actually say my main focus of all things for writing Chinese characters is so that my dictionary can understand what I'm writing. Because if that happens, then I can look up a bunch of words in an electronic dictionary and I don't have to ask other people. Now, of course, as you progress, as I have progressed, uh, my goal has been able to, has been to develop my writing abilities because I will be taking uh, the HSK-5 test the paper-based version, which requires you to handwrite your essay. And that's what I'm aiming to do as well. So there you go. These are all, all my books that I've used throughout the years to learn how to write Chinese characters. Uh, some of I, I've stuck around more than others. Uh, I found the McNaughton book, the Reading and Writing Chinese book, this big white one was very good. Uh, but they've all sort of played a role in my development uh, at some point. If this helps, let me know in the comments below. I hope, uh, I mean, if you do start writing or learning Chinese, I do suggest that you start writing uh, sooner than later because it will help you develop your uh, vocabulary and your understanding of the language uh, and it'll help things stick a little bit more because there are a lot of characters to learn uh, and it does take quite a while to develop uh, that ability to not just read, uh, but to understand how all these uh, characters go together. 
All right, hope that helps. Let me know if I can help out uh, in your Chinese studies or your language studies at all. Let me know in the comments below. Hope that helps. Have a good one. We'll talk again. Bye-bye.